This is a congressional hearing of three chancellors or presidents of some of our most elite institutions of higher learning, campuses where students have been chanting Infanta, and genocide to the Jews, and, uh, and these chancellors are asked, answering questions, why? Why are we allowing this? on our campuses. I want to show this and I want to get Amir's response to this because we need to know how to talk about this. Our kids are being confronted with a worldview. Uh, our kids are being confronted with a distortion of the truth. Uh, our kids in many cases are motivated by the right things. They want to take up the cause of the oppressed or those that they see are victims. And we need to learn what the truth is and how to have a genuine, intelligent conversation with those that disagree with us. But it is time for the church to engage in the conversation. And so I want to show this, and then I want to hear Amir's response to what we hear and see here. At MIT, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate MIT's code of conduct or rules regarding bullying and harassment? Yes or no? If targeted at individuals not making public statements. Yes or no? Calling for the genocide of Jews does have, not constitute bullying and harassment? I have not heard calling for the genocide for Jews on our campus. But you've heard chants for intifada. I've heard chants, which can be Semitic depending on the context, when calling for the elimination of the Jewish people. So those would not be according to the MIT's code of conduct or rules? That would be um, investigated of, uh, as harassment if pervasive and severe. Ms. McGill, at Penn, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment, yes. I am asking, specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. It's a context-dependent decision. That's your testimony today. Calling for the genocide of Jews is depending upon the context. That is not bullying or harassment. This is the easiest question to answer yes, Ms. McGill. So is your if testimony it, that it, you will not answer yes? If it uh, is, if the, yes or becomes, no. if the speech becomes conduct, it can be harassment, yes. Conduct meaning committing the act of genocide? The speech is not harassment? This is unacceptable, Ms. McGill. I'm going to give you one more opportunity for the world to see your answer. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's code of conduct when it comes to bullying and harassment? Yes or no? It can be harassment. The answer is yes. And Dr. Gay, at Harvard, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment, yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. What's the context? Targeted as an individual, targeted as, at an individual. It's so targeted at Jewish that. students, Jewish individuals. Do you understand your testimony is dehumanizing them? Do you understand that dehumanization is part of antisemitism? I will ask you one more time. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment? Yes or no? Anti-Semitic rhetoric. When it and is it anti-Semitic rhetoric? Anti-Semitic rhetoric when it crosses into conduct that amounts to bullying, harassment, intimidation, that is actionable conduct and we do take action. So the answer is yes that calling for the genocide of Jews violates Harvard Code of Conduct, correct? Again, it depends on the context. It does not depend on the context. The answer is yes, and this is why you should resign. These are unacceptable answers across the board. What is our civilization coming to? 
So I have some thoughts I'd love to share, but you haven't heard, you know, you, you're not here because you want to hear mine. I know, I know, I know. You haven't driven hundreds of miles. To, I, I know. Amir, how do you respond first when you hear this? And, and how do you think you should instruct Christians to engage in this conversation with intelligence and information, not emotion, but, but with facts? Well, the Bible tells us that if we hate any group of people, the Spirit of God is not in us. And we need to understand that if you come against the people of God, you're coming against the apple of God's eyes. But I will tell you, what you just saw demonstrates to you the fruit of progressive mind, mindset. If, ye, if, if that congresswoman would have asked about LGBTQ or about Africans or about um, uh, uh, Arabs or about others, the answer would be very, very quickly, yes. What we see here is continuation of the attempt of the, and by the way, make no mistake, if you look at this only with eyes of a human without understanding the spiritual angle of it, this is a spiritual attack. Only the enemy wants people to not count a genocide of Jews as something that has to be immediately eradicated. Only the enemy wants the Jewish people to be completely wiped out and you will only look at it depends on the context. You have to understand this type of, and these are the leaders of those institutions. The Ivy League universities, that's their death right now. What you just saw, I don't think, I don't think anyone would consider them uh, in, in the future, because that is the type of something that no parent would like his child to adopt. But I will tell you that this is not something new. This is what you see now is the manifestation of that which has been worked on and, and diligently um, uh, pumped into the, 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 the hearts and the minds of so many people throughout the last 20 or 30 years.